Cars, they come and go, they come fast, they come slow. They go like the last light of the sun, all in a blaze. And all you see is glory. Today, I wanted to create a quick tutorial on how you could web scrape. So, there are a lot of advantages to web scraping, and I'm actually going to show you a quick demonstration on what web scraping actually is because it's kind of a term that people don't really understand what it is and it's kind of like a foreign term so I'm just going to quickly demonstrate so I have copied code and when I paste it into my spider terminal and I execute the code web scraping is essentially we are pretending to be a browser and we're going to get all the information that's not JavaScript information, just all the information on a web page, and it's going to be dumped into the terminal here. So, actually, if we were to print soup, it's going to show us the results of all the contents of Coin Market Cap. Okay, so it's going to all this information we see here is the HTML in a string of coin market cap and it's all very um, big and complicated mess but if we do manipulate and search the string properly we can get useful information such as the Bitcoin price the 24 hour rate of change of Bitcoin the Bitcoin weekly price rate of change um, and it's not just for Bitcoin but for the top 150 cryptocurrencies so this has a big advantage you don't have to rely on any API we don't have to necessarily rely on we don't have to install the BitMEX or Binance API we could just get all the prices at hand and another thing I like to bring up is sometimes when you are algo trading you do only have very limited API calls so BitMEX is not that merciful they only give us let's say five api calls per minute so you as a developer you're trying to scratch your head you're saying if, if i'm only able to request information from bitmex five times a minute what exactly do i need to request and what exactly can i not request so this is a, uh, an example where you would be able to get the information of the coins on BitMEX without actually um, wasting a very useful API call because the API calls are mostly used for opening trades, closing trades, getting candle data. We don't want to waste our time with, um, you know, live updating like tick information. So, so now actually we'll just go quickly into the manipulation of this said. Um, string object so I'll quickly go over the code if you don't already know um actually let me quickly bring this up let me see so this is something I don't talk about but if you're watching this video you're gonna learn I always recommend you use the anaconda distribution of Python like if you're on Windows Mac or Linux I always use anaconda like it's um it's configured version of Python very well where I'm able to download it and I'm able to pip install whatever I need and I'm ready to go and it already has a lot of built-in tools and it's very nice so now and that comes with spider and that's my favorite um, Python compiler so that's also a plus and it has all the good tools and comes with spider I'm not gonna argue anaconda is for me the de facto winner people like PyCharm better but I don't know, I just stuck with Spider, and I see there are some adventures Spider have, has that PyCharm doesn't. So, I'm stalling enough time, I'm actually going to get into the coding of this video. So now, so now, import urlib3, if you don't have this, you have to pip install urlib3, and you probably have to pip install bs4, and these are going to allow us to get the string information as displayed in this console here um, so now like, like I said I'm going to go into the manipulation of the string so an industry practice with web scraping is it's kind of the near the variable for the result of what we're web scraping is called a soup it's kind of a weird thing where it's like p import pandas as PD where 
PD is kind of like a short um, acronym, and that's just kind of the same thing with, with is with soup here. So it's just like um, it's just like an industry uh, standard that you call it soup, like the variable. I don't really care. I'm just gonna call it soup, and I'm not gonna be any different. Um, I'm stalling so much time. I'm sorry. Basically, quickly going over my GitHub. Um, we can do. So this is a code I writ written before, and it's publicly available, and it's going to get us the Bitcoin and Ethereum prices. So when I paste this in, let me um, actually remove the tab. So you, to remove the tab, you go Shift Tab. It's going to move everything back one space. So now the final result should be a bunch of print statements and actually I could I could comment out this soup up here and that will generate a when I clear this console it's gonna generate the current price of Bitcoin the current price of Ethereum the 24-hour BTC change percentage wise and the percentage rate of change 24 hours of Ethereum so it's not specifically so this code is nice in a sense where you could you could in a, in a sense um, you don't have to specifically find Bitcoin or Ethereum let's say I want to find like Chainlink or let's say let's say uh, Litecoin I believe let me see if I could uh, I believe I could just go L I T E coin Litecoin Litecoin and Litecoin let me see what happens when I compile this code there we go so it's, it's actually very simple the way how I made it where you basically could just search up the cryptocurrency name and it will give you the current price of Litecoin and its 24 hour rate of change so this is um, a very nice script I made so what's so special about the script is that when you are trying to web scrape coin market cap um, the HTML tags themselves the actual name of the tags are changing but through clever thought I was able to realize that well no matter the HTML tags are going to be changing that's that's going to be a given factor but we could know that the information that is going to be in the string is always going to be between HTML tags. So with that in mind, we could always try to find uh, like a dollar sign that has to always display dollar sign or it always has to display a percentage. And that's kind of like a like a big weakness that we're able to exploit through web scraping because it's going to be so much more difficult to um, actually web scrape if if there's no constant um, that we could find. So the, the HTML tags, from my experience, they change on a bi-monthly basis. So what's going to appear in this video now won't necessarily be the same exact uh, HTML tags that will appear two months from now because their website's always updating. But an exploit we can kind of abuse, it's not abuse that we can take advantage of, is that their their information is held between HTML tags. So actually, what I mean by this, so when I decide to actually print soup again, hold on. Uh, let's try, actually try to find it. Um, let me see here. So I'm just quickly analyzing. So If I could actually hold on, go control find on this actually control find. Let me go to Ethereum. Let me make this capital E two. Ethereum, Ethereum. All right, so one. No, it has to be the next one. Ethereum, 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 Ethereum. Right here. So perfect. So this is what I exactly I'm talking about. So this is an HTML tag, and it's bounded between. Uh, uh, a class like so the a class HTML tag actually a table row too so it, it's what it, basically it this is this is bound between HTML tags so if we know that we can in a sense um, 
know where to look for the information. Like, so, like, the big weakness is that there is a dollar sign all the time. So, it's also the position of the dollar sign, too. So, what's kind of good with my script is that I, I did, um, did a lot of playing around, and this will work on just about any cryptocurrency, and you probably, like, you don't have to worry. If something, some, some... Some coins have unique um, names that are kind of hard to find. So I do believe Chainlink is a, um, it's not actually in here. Oh, hold on. Chainlink. Well, how many times does Chainlink appear? Chainlink. Oh, wow. Okay, Chainlink is actually, they. F so the Chainlink's name used to be different, and I wasn't sure, but now we can see Chainlink's price is $1.83, and um, you could web scrape it too. That's very cool. All right, so yeah, so any any coin you ever wanted the current price of, or it's 24-hour rate of change, the 24-hour rate of change is probably why I web scrape uh, coin market cap more so than its actual price because when I, at first for my algorithm, I'm looking at the 24 hour rate of change for some kind of decision making that I don't really want to make public, but that's kind of why I'm interested in web scraping coin market cap. And it's not even so much for the current price, it's for the global standard deviation. So if Ethereum's price has this much rate of change across, you know, how many exchanges hold Ethereum? If, if, if Ethereum's price, um, is this much different from the previous, and this is a, a standard constant against a, on all all the exchanges that are trading Ethereum? Then it's the safe assumption that it's not just um, Bitmex that's um, the value of the of the ETH contract is um, not an anomaly, but it's actually truthful that Ethereum's price is in fact uh, should be this high at this point in time. It's kind of a just something I like to make sure about. But um, we all have different uh, reasons for web scraping. And so so maybe this script, um, maybe you don't really like CoinMarketCap. Uh, I kind of did not like CoinMarketCap because their website is changing a lot. And another really quick alternative is CoinGecko. So I have their code here and it should work. I I believe CoinGecko does not change their their um their HTML that often. So let me actually hold on if I could just delete all this. So now when I re refresh the console here and I try to load it, it's going to give me the current price of Ethereum again, $133. So this is uh, this is probably an easier script, but I'm I like I said I like Coin Market Cap because I'm able to steal the twenty four hour uh, rate of change, the the pr percentage rate of change. So, um, it's all up to what you fancy. This is objectively an easier and um, beginner friendly uh, script to steal the information. Like I say, steal. It's like it's kind of like um. It's not actually stealing. Like there's, no, it's not like a crime to uh, web scrape. It's, it's so. I don't. I don't know. It's just like it's kind of just like a like a dirty term. Like I mean, I'm accessing a website's information without necessarily web browsing. So it's kind of like a like a new paradigm of uh, actually getting information. We're we're simulating a website HTTP request, and we are getting the the HTML of a website without necessarily going to a browser and loading the website. So like if I go to coin market cap here, coin market cap and go to this website. Uh, you can't see it actually. Hold on. Let me just readjust this, uh, this tab. Uh, Okay, that's that should be sufficient for this video. So we do see it's basically we're stealing the HTML that would basically make this website. So it's like um, Ethereum is like a dollar. Okay, I guess the price of Ethereum went up now. Okay, so um, regardless, it's just um, 
instead of actually visiting the website, we're able to take all that website information and we're able to just have Python deal with the data value. So let's see what Chainlink's price is at. Chainlink is $1.84. That seems about right. So, um, yeah, so web scraping is inherently a thing you should probably want to do seriously if you have a trading account on like bitmex like i think you should be trading only on bitmex anyways but um that's probably why you should be looking into web scraping if you are uh, algo trading and you want ways you want access to information without um like i like i said i really like this uh percent change this 24 hour percent change that's very helpful for me for my uh set of calculations but um it's all particularly what you want to do at the end of the day and I found a purpose for web scraping and it was very helpful for me for my quest on algo trading and ultimately I hope that this video can help you guys to some capacity that the same way um hmm what what else do I want to say Hopefully this video was helpful to you guys to some capacity and I will be making my next video about Forex so stay tuned for that because I feel like um, this channel is mostly interested in Forex right now and not so much crypto and to me that makes sense I guess Bitcoin's kind of dead quote unquote and most people are interested in only viewing um, interesting markets which would be the forex market right now more so than the cryptocurrency market so to me that makes sense and i am an algo trader on both markets and i don't mind making content so yeah just stay stay tuned um in the coming weeks and i'll make a new video on forex and hopefully you will enjoy that video so this is mark from python for trading and i'm signing out this video have a good day guys